Hi. Did you know that you can watch Last Podcast on the Left and Side Stories on our Patreon right now? Yes, that's patreon.com slash last podcast on the left. But over on TikTok, you can see the hottest, tightest, funniest clips from the show right there. It's TikTok. TikTok. It's at LP on the left. It's the same as our Instagram. You already follow the Instagram. Why don't you go follow TikTok? But it's on TikTok. Yeah, because seeing is believing. Yep. So just go check it out. Watch it. Go send our podcast to China. I love TikTok the crocodile. It's my favorite TikTok. That's the only one he knows. There's no place to escape to. This is the last podcast. On the left. (laughs) That's when the cannibalism started. What was that? Yes. I, Henry Zabrowski, <laughs> here within the void. Oh! Oh! Is this mysterious? It is. It would be mysterious if the uh, listeners could see you. Oh! <laughs> I'm in the same exact studio where they filmed the moon landing. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. right. It, yeah, apparently they filmed the moon landing in Atlanta, where Henry Zabrowski is recording from right now. Yeah. Well, welcome yeah, to the last yeah. podcast on the left. I'm Marcus Sparks here with Ed Larson in Los Angeles, where nothing fake is ever filmed. Oh, my Whoa. God. Except for the boobies. <laughs> except for the boobies and some of the butts. It is kind of funny. If you see in the video version, I'm wearing a black shirt, too. So I sort of look like, do you remember Mum and Shantz? <laughs> no, I don't know what mum remember and Shantz. Remember Mum and Shantz? You know, no, it's like no. from the 1970s where they would do like puppet things on real television where they would do a lot of like, it's like, I just look like, oh, I feel like I'm in Haozu. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I didn't know it had a name though. Yeah. You never, you don't know Mum and Shantz? Well, I don't want to fucking know you anymore. I can't believe you. can't you. just describe things by going, oh, <laughs> that's not, that's not evocative. You know? If you knew <laughs> Mum and Chance, then the, the, if the audience knows Mum and Chance, then, then they know what I'm doing. It's just it's it's disembodied head and hands. It reminds me of Labyrinth. You know, the guys whose heads would go up and down, and they started playing basketball with them and shit. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fun. Well, this week we got a true crime roundup for everyone. Woo! Bang, 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 bang. I know we have been prepping you guys for doing a huge series and we are going, we are just about to do two massive series. And we actually just got off a call where we have planned out the next year of gut busting content. Yeah. For you pieces of shit. All right. But right now I'm here, man. <laughs> I'm working on a much. pile. Yeah, we're there. Yeah, yeah. Pieces of shit. <laughs> fucking pieces of shit. And I fucking, that's, that's I'm here. Henry speaking. That is, I like you. Yeah. I'm breaking my back on a pilot presentation right now where I have to fake playing soccer. Yeah. And oh, I, how's um, that going? I am sore. Yeah. <laughs> and I got hit. I got hit with the ball yesterday. How many times? Once. Yeah. Well, that they you, hit. you're a goalie, right? Yeah. Yes. You're not even doing you're the hardest. Supposed to, you're supposed to get hit. Yeah. I got. I asked them after I got hit once to please be careful with me because we're playing against, it's a bunch of actors playing against a real soccer team. And so the guy uncorked on me before we knew, and it just hit me right in the chest. Also, I'm wearing like full body armor underneath my goalie uniform. And then another goalie came in and he wasn't wearing any of that. And I was like, I don't understand because I have like knee guards on. I got hip guards on. I got a chest plate. That I'm wearing. You're precious. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be hurt. Just remember, every time they kick, you say the words not in the face. Yeah. Not, in the face. <laughs> <laughs> not in the face. Not in the face. But it's been a lot of fun. We're having a good time. It's me, Rory Scoville, and Dave Willis, and we're enjoying ourselves. That's yeah. awesome. That sounds yeah, wonderful. Really um, but you know who's also a little fucking bitch is that Jennifer Crumbly. Yeah. Jennifer Crumbly is, this is one hell of a story. I'm not sure if you've uh, been following this one, but Mm -hmm. there was a school shooting in Michigan uh, in 2021. This kid killed four people and he killed them with a gun, a handgun that had been gifted to him by his parents. Oh, like the roof. Uh, somewhat, yeah. Uh, and he had, um, of course, been, he did not, he was taken alive uh, and he was charged. He, you know, 
found guilty, life in prison without possibility of parole. But for the first time, they also charged the mother uh, with and the invol- father and the father. His, the mother has been tried. The father's trial is coming up with involuntary manslaughter because they were the ones who gave the kid the gun, despite seeing many signs that he was mentally unstable. And she has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Good. And now, th- this is huge, though, because it's I understand as a parent. Of uh, two willful dogs, it's hard to be <laughs> held responsible for the actions of a chihuahua, right? Yeah. Like Carmi, Carmi's aggressive, but Carmi also at the same time is is loving. I know her, I know mm-hmm. Carmi, and I want the world to know Carmi. You know what I mean? But if Carmi kept sending me letters from the groomer that said stuff <laughs> like "I think of blood." I dream of death. All I want to do is kill, 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 kill. First of all, kind of cute. She's learned to write. (laughs) Second of all, it's like you would want to do something. And in this case, what we're seeing uh, is this like kind of like the reason why it's unprecedented is because who wants to be held responsible for the actions of others? Because, you know, no one's really technically responsible for anybody else's life. That's not how it fucking works. But like this, this idea of like, it was so over the line, how much Ethan Crumbly was asking them for help. Like other kids, like we've seen other kid school shooters. It seems to a lot of times it's like, yes, there is some planning, but a lot of it is pretty, it's in the moment and it's a hidden thing. It's like, they're, they're not telling people, you know, like Ethan Crumbly, like showed his mom, his journal saying, I want help. He texted her again and again and again and again saying, I'm seeing demons. I'm seeing visions. I'm seeing the shit. He's telling his teachers, like, I want to kill. And no one is. And they're telling them. But even though Jennifer Crumbly says that she'd never heard from the school. Well, he uh, got caught searching online for bullets at school. He would watch shooting videos in class and he would draw violent images like the The school knew something was up and they were contacting her. Of course yeah. they yes. were contacting her and her saying that uh, her defense of him telling her that like I see demons, blah, blah, blah. They said it was a cute inside joke amongst the family that the house was haunted. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, how old was he when he did the when he did the deed? Uh, he was fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. He no. Was, this is the, yeah. Lock her up. Lock him up, and then start going. And now that they have done this, and she is guilty, they need to go after fucking Dylan Roof's stepdad. Yeah. And you, you know. Start, and you. This is the. This is an actual way to start stopping this shit. Yeah. Well, to they, really they, go after the parents who give them the guns. Yeah. But you need a chain of evidence. You need to have the backup to put it through a trial. So the one thing that this case has that no other cases really had up to this point is fucking it's all in writing. And like you're looking at Jennifer Crumbly, who like the way the prosecution set it up was essentially she was too busy getting railed in order to watch after her son. She described herself as a helicopter parent, but then all of a sudden she's talking about how like, she's got to go visit her horses three times a week. The horses got more one-on-one time yeah. with Jennifer Crumbly than her murderous son. And then she uh, she started, she had an affair going on with some other guy who looked like, I mean, she looks like Elmer Fudd, but this <laughs> other guy looks like a guy that would fuck oh, Elmer yeah. Fudd. You know, and it, it, these guys are, a, and, but then she was an adult friend finder setting up all these like trysts and doing all this. She had a lot of energy for her cooch, but she didn't have a heck of a lot of energy for her son. Man, so she, people are actually on adult friend finder? I oh, yeah, buddy. So. Yeah. No, it's, I always it thought is that real. was a scam. Well, I'm sure I don't know if it's, I feel like them saying that there are definitely local MILFs. Yeah. Like trying to fuck you tonight. Like, People get know. divorced. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> that is true. There are, there are definitely horny singles in my area, technically. Yeah, I just didn't think I didn't think they would be on Adult Friend Finder. Man, well, that's so crazy she calls herself a helicopter parent. I always thought the worst helicopter parent was Kobe Bryant. <laughs> but... <laughs> I can't believe that you would do that on this fucking show. I can't believe here in Los Angeles. How fucking dare you? The land of Kobe. You would ever say something like that. I'm in Atlanta. 
Florida. My name's Henry Zabrowski. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we know it's it's it, it's really fucked because yeah, I mean, at least she wasn't on Child Friend Finder because that's really kind of <laughs> and they should get rid of that app. But the Adult Friend Finder stuff is very like it just shows that she, her her head was not in the game. But it, no. in the end, her her defense attorney was one of the single worst attorneys I have ever seen. I watched hours of the trial. Yeah. She quoted, ta her first line was quoting Taylor Swift. She then came Ugh. in and she openly would weep. She she pretended to gag when they showed footage of the shooting. She openly wept on in trial, which is like, you just, they, they instruct their clients to show no emotion. And yeah, they, that's they, why they do pump you full of like Xanax and Valium. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's gotta be fun. Mm -hmm. I would definitely be all zannied up. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Trial. Buddy. Yeah, zannied oh. the nanny would be all over yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely be circuiting. But I I also feel it's it, it's hard because the, then you look at, you remember the, the it was the documentary, I believe it was about Adam Lanza's mom. Mm -hmm. Where you have the other side where they really don't know what the fuck to do when they got a kid that's like, I hate to use the term born bad. Yeah. But yeah. a kid that's coming out of the coming out of the fucking oven with some misfiring wires. Yeah. Like, and then what do you do then? Like, can you control the everyday, every single day actions of a child? They're still like an adult. They're still an autonomous human being. I mean, you can but, control how many guns you keep in your house. Yes. I think that's the thing. I think yeah. that's a big question. That's all like, what can we do? It's like <laughs> maybe make it so a 15 year old can't easily sh shoot a bunch of people with a yeah. semi-automatic gun. And didn't Lanza kill his mom? Yeah. She killed her first. Yeah. And he killed her first and then went out to Sandy Hook. That should have been enough warning for this bitch. But no, no I'm she sorry, wrote I didn't that. You can't believe I'm just mad but, about the situation. Yes. But it's I think that it was a it was from the perspective of another woman writing about a kid with these types of emotional issues. But this is a woman that was working her ass off trying to help it. Meanwhile, like Ethan Crumbly was begging for help to yeah. everyone that would listen to him. And because again, like that sometimes that's what a parent's supposed to do. A parent's supposed to come in and not be your friend. In my mind, I don't know. They're supposed to, like sometimes it'd be cool if you could like, you know, bum a cigarette or drink a beer with your dad or whatever. But I also think that you, at the same time, yeah, I don't know. No, I never got to do that with my father. My father had a problem with alcohol. Yeah. 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 No, you shouldn't be. If your kid is begging for help, you shouldn't be meeting a guy named Brian Malochi in the Costco parking lot to fuck him during daylight hours. Think yeah. about that. That's where you think about that's where the affair was happening. Yeah. Six months meeting up in the Costco parking lot to fuck in the car. Man, that guy must have had a big dick, you know, because of Costco, everything's <laughs> much larger. Very big. <laughs> yeah, you get big. hungry after sex, you yeah. fuck, you go inside, you get a hot dog. Yeah, 10 pounds of peanut butter. Here you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every single time I go to get the good discount land from the Costco, I get hard just thinking about it from a Pavlov dog like <laughs> memory of, of me coming each time I'm at Costco. Yeah, I would go get Kirk landed. I'll be back soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's one horrible story of the How week. How long is she looking at? Like, because obviously they didn't sentence her yet. They just uh, in five. It would be counts of involuntary manslaughter. Um, I'm not exactly sure. It's got to be at least five years. She's getting one for each victim. She's yeah. getting one for each four of the, the the four people that died in the shooting. She is getting each one. She's great new precedent. I totally believe in this. Yeah, I believe. Oh, in this yeah. as well. Yeah, keep. Fucking guns out of children's hands. Yeah, yeah. If you that's, have a, it's that easy. Yeah, uh, just keep guns out of kids' hands. And if you uh, put a gun in a kid's hand and he kills someone, you're held responsible. Yes. My question is though, what I do understand, there are some families that like to hunt animals and have that kind of stuff. Like, well, I don't you know, get a like, lock like, for your gun closet. But that's the that thing. is all. Like, that's a part of what the <laughs> prosecution was saying is that the guns were not properly kept. Obviously, is yeah. that they were not. You know, like the father was like, I put that gun location in a new place. Each day. One time it was in the freezer next to the ice cream. The other day it was next to the Wi-Fi router. And the <laughs> other was, day... Hold on, I can't remember. Where the hell was it? Oh, it was in Ethan's hands. I, a lot of times I keep it in his bed. <laughs> no, if you're... I come from a hunting family and there were guns around all the time. Yeah. Uh, but that's the thing is that if your kid starts acting twitchy, put the guns away. Amen. Get rid of... You know, get, put, take, give the guns to your friend Bill. 
Yeah. Just give, give your guns to your friends. Like, hey, why don't you hold on to the guns for a while? You know, Brian's acting a little twitchy. Yes. It's Marcus, like, everyone, happy to do it. Were you not twitchy? Not that twitchy. So the guns were never thought of ta- being taken away from you at any point. No one ever looked at you. On because dirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're digging dirt. You're writing no. poetry. You're talking about noise rock. No, yeah, I certainly didn't hold on to a gun for a very long time. One deep, dark night. Hell yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> In high school, who didn't? Who didn't do that? You guys all did that. It, I mean, it was more of a dramatic thing for myself than it was for anything else. But, you know, it was dramatic effect. My you know, father, when, honestly, was very good with his gun. Yeah. He did. He did. Um, and I was largely scared of it as a kid. Yeah. As you should be. What's funny, though, is that that gun was just like that gun that night was when I was away from home where I work in construction, like doing journeyman construction for a summer uh, before I was uh, my senior year in high school. And I don't remember where the gun came from. The gun was like just in the house where I was staying at the time. I was just a free floating gun. That's there it. are so many guns in this country. Lock them up. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, it's kind of like, a, so many it's like the Bible in a hotel room in Texas where they just have been like, now you could use that gun, but no, we're going to charge the room if you don't come back with it. <laughs> no, it was a house that was written with two other dudes, and that was just a gun there. And yeah, like, there was a Bible, and there was a gun-shaped hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the guns were always just out and about, you know. Yeah. There there was a gun room, but I wouldn't call it a gun safe. It was just the gun room where there yeah. were many, many guns. But they were hunting guns, you know, like they were all like shotguns, rifles, stuff like that. Yeah. But, but no, like, I mean, this is before the days of AR fifteen. This is the nineties. So Yeah, exactly. No, Everything I done, actually had a purpose. Yeah, I could have done some damage, but not that much damage. Yeah. You know, at least you didn't have a bullet library. No, because I feel I like that's how you know if it's bad. Like if you, I feel like it's not so much the guns as it's the bullets. Mm. Also, where you were, there were like no people. Yeah, I mean, I, you <laughs> know, like no one to kill. If I wanted to, <laughs> if I wanted to, I could have had a day. Killed a bunch of I, people. I, I, I could have had a day because remember we were high, high school during Columbine. Oh yeah, yeah. Man. I, I was in student council during Columbine. That shit was crazy. How how did being in student council affect your the, the Columbine experience? Well, they like took student council aside the day after Columbine and they like sat us down with a bunch of counselors and like, you're the leaders of the school. You need to find out like if anyone's acting funny. And then like some kid, I remember some kid, no one knew a weird drifter type kid. He had, he brought, he wore a long trench coat the next day and he stood up on a table during the uh, cafeteria and he said, uh, trench coat mafia motherfucker or something like that. Jesus. And then uh, a bunch of the black kids kicked his ass. Gotcha. Uh, (laughs) And that's called a self-correcting ecosystem. (laughs) And that's what you need to do. That's what each community needs. Well, I remember I was in a play and our play was canceled. Uh, because it had it had a bomb in it, it had a bomb in it, and then we had to be on uh, morning television talking about our First Amendment rights. Because I remember being there and being with my beret. Literally, I wore my beret because I had my because I was the president. And no, that was before I was president. But I, I was starting doing my affectation period, and mm. I remember being there and just being like, being like, it is not fair that you would not allow us freedom of expression. <laughs> It was just like it's just a stupid play. It had a bomb in it. Yeah, I don't know like, why it was not canceled. Like you wrote it. Yeah, it's not, yeah, <laughs> it's like Neil no, Simon or something. It barely registered in Rochester, Texas. Like yeah. I remember it happening, and I was like, "Wow, that's weird." And then just day went on. Yeah, not yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, uh, Oklahoma City. That was our big one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, no, yeah. oh yeah, the Oklahoma City bombing. That that was our yeah because we weren't too far from Oklahoma, so that that was our big one. I remember that was the last time I ever talked to my grandmother. Was, was she, she in, in the, the building? building? I, no, I was. I was. I was randomly homesick from school or something. Day of Oklahoma City, and she called, and I picked up, and like we had a nice long conversation. It was like the last, like truly one of the only conversations I remember with her. Wow! So yeah. you yeah. connect, <laughs> you connect the Oklahoma City bombing with your favorite conversation with your grandmother. You're like, hey, it's right, Nanu. Uh, oh babu, yeah, Babu, 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 <laughs> oh, Babu. <laughs> well, Nanu had some really controversial opinions about Waco. Oh. That's- Oh yeah. yeah, it's different. Yeah, yeah she calls it a Satanist, I believe. 
You, but that's you fucking, just say that's your like. Do you know that or was that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. She was into witchcraft and shit like that. But I, you know, I didn't learn too yeah. much. Yeah, because I she was out of my life by the time I was ten. So I don't my my memories are a little hazy. Hazy. Wow. That's yeah, cool. she, was a, she was a fucker. But she wasn't my real grandmother. She was uh, the woman my grandfather married. Wow. Baba. What a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it stands for it. Bye from your grave. Hello! Ed Larson and Amber Nelson from the brighter side here to check in with you, see how you're doing. Is your day more disappointing than a gas station sandwich? Are you trying to put one foot in front of the other in a glue factory? Did you try to throw your air fryer in the bathtub, but nothing happened because you were too lazy to plug it in first? Then the Brighter Side podcast is for you! Oh, yeah! Each week, we take nasty, dookie, stupid, dumb, stinky, no good, doo-doo factory, caca-like topics, and try to find the brighter side. Hey, Amber, uh, what's the brighter side of waking up chained to a bed in Russia? Um, at least they have free health care. That's right. So start your weekend off right every Friday with the brighter side on the last podcast network. You beautiful babies. All right, let's get into this. Show. I want to talk about this pastor. You got this roll up on this show. I want to get into this story. I love this story so much. A Colorado pastor who was charged with stealing more than $1 million from his Christian community in a cryptocurrency scheme has admitted to the fraud, but argued that God instructed him to carry it out. He's not wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, of course, God wants crypto. <laughs> <laughs> Something else you can't see or feel. <laughs> <laughs> Just have faith that it'll be worth something. <laughs> if we believe that it has worth, then it will be worth something. It's transubstantiation. <laughs> it works. <laughs> uh, but I all, uh, we did an interview with Paul Hynek, that is Jay Allen Hynek's son, and he was all about this concept that if aliens existed, they definitely use crypto. And he was working on this alien-based crypto for a long time. And it has just as much water as this guy's fucking Christian crypto. Eli Regalado and his wife, Caitlin, are charged with creating and selling their cryptocurrency known as Index Coin. That's I-N-D-X in all caps, coin, okay. to Christians based in their hometown of Denver, allegedly telling would-be investors that the Lord had told him people would become rich if they invested. You got to believe. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about putting an X in the middle of a name without any vowels around it. It's like Nexium, yeah. all the index. Like if you if there's a big X in there, stay beware, away. Stay away. It's like stay it's away. It's telling you. It's yeah. It is just like you know yeah. Twitter becoming X. Yeah. It's like stay away. Exactly. Yeah. The state flag of Alabama. Big X. <laughs> and bang it. Like, bye. <laughs> Go away. It's poison. <laughs> stay away from the X's. <laughs> <laughs> but man, it's the this that idea of like you had the opportunity to do the you know how like on top of Jesus it had the I'm nailed right in initials. <laughs> Oh, the I-N-R-I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Henry. <laughs> I never thought yeah. of it like wow, that. Wow, I'm nailed great. right in. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah, that's nice. You know, that's the joke. That's the whole joke. I, I never the, heard the joke before. Yeah, I've never heard that hey. joke. Did you write it? No, I don't think so. I'm pretty certain that I I read that from some dirty joke book <laughs> back in the day. But Henry coin would have been huge. Yeah, Henry yeah. coin would have been great. No, no, index coin. Index coin was, by the way, practically worthless in reality, prosecutors said in the statement. Investors lost millions of dollars while the regalados used their investments for lavish living. In a video statement about the charges, Eli admitted that the couple had squandered $1.3 million that was raised through cryptocurrency. Here's a quote from a video. The charges are that me and Caitlin pocketed $1.3 million. I just wanted to come out and say those charges are true. That's a fucking awesome. That's just like, <laughs> I love that. I love that. I the, can't he, tell a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I physically can't. He doubled down so hard. He said... A few hundred thousand dollars went to a home remodel that the Lord told us to do. Yeah, we, man. He said, we took God at his word and sold a cryptocurrency with no clear exit. Uh -huh. <laughs> but he still <laughs> believes that God will, quote, work a miracle in the financial sector. Yeah, well, God loves carpenters. We know this. <laughs> Yes. Wouldn't it be the carpenters work? Maybe God doesn't understand what a blockchain is as well. 
Yeah. Maybe God decided it was like, you know, crypto sounds like a thing that we could put some disposable income in. Let's just a see if it rises in worth. And then as soon as it happens, he's like, oh, I always should have known. Crypto is fake. <laughs> is that God speaking? Yes. yes. Oh, see, I always figure, can't be talking like this. <laughs> hey, hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, it's me, hi. <laughs> hey, sit my son down. Now to his dick. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, I'll get him again. So you, Thank you for killing my son. <laughs> <laughs> so you imagine God to sound vaguely like Prince. Yes. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, he's a prince. Oh, yeah. Very <laughs> much so. Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. And tiny. Mm -hmm. So God is a tiny Jehovah's Witness from Minnesota. But very powerful. But, yeah. So this is what I find interesting is that they raised, though, they did make $3.2 mm -hmm. So they left some. So that's kind of nice. Well, well, they could give it back. They could give it back. They took, mm -hmm. well, they did. They no, raised no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. You're excommunicated. <laughs> Just even for fucking thinking that. But what's incredible is that they got $3.2 million dollars from just 300 people. Like, Whoa. that's incredible. Like, these people had some rich fucks on the line. I mean, if you're stealing from rich people, I don't really care. Yeah. If I, I, if I can be honest. Yeah. Well, but who it, knows? Or it's the idea, it's kind of, sometimes you wonder, are they rich or are they just giving them everything that they have? That's usually the case. Yeah. yeah you'll, you'll find again and again, when it's when you get that sort of thing, it's usually people betting their entire life savings Man, on And like this. people will, to the church especially, like people will just give every cent they have to the church thinking it's, first of all, they feel guilty. They, they put so much guilt on them to not give to the church. Yeah. My mom was like this. She would like borrow money from me and then give it to the church and it would make me fucking insane. Yeah. You yes. know, and so it's just like, it's people do this all over the country and it's just like because they believe the more they give, the more chance they have of going to heaven. And these, and these are the, like, all of these small online churches that are, this is one of those, yeah. they've been popping up, especially after COVID. So many of them popped up. Twin Flames is like a, a, a pretty big example of it. But this is just called the Victorious Grace Church. There's no physical location for it. Uh, they, uh, it's an online only church and it's just these two people in front of fucking, in a Zoom. Man, and they really, it, God, that's so smart. Yeah, we no gotta overhead. do this. Yeah, they we don't even need rent. Pay rent anymore. Nothing. It's so yeah. smart, man. We need to return to church. <laughs> <laughs> what will these churches do? The entire church real estate market's gonna collapse unless we start forcing these pastors to return to the pulpit. One point three million dollars out of that three point two million was used for personal luxury purchases, including jewelry, a pricey home renovation project, which I mentioned before. And an au pair. Oh, really? An au pair? Is it au pair? I think it's au pair. Au pair. Yeah, yeah, an au pair. They yeah. hired an au pair. I mean, it, so for to take care of their children, To I take guess? care of their children, yeah. And to fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they're called an au pair. <laughs> <laughs> and additionally, they had no experience with cryptocurrency. A of third, course. <laughs> a third party auditor also said the index coin code had significant technical problems, whatever the fuck that means. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But the regalados continued to market the cryptocurrency as a low risk, high reward option. Eli had claimed to investigators that an amount of the raised money would be used to help widows and orphans but those purported payments were also personally spent by the Regalados. Oh, come on. At least help the widows and the orphans. No. Nah. Nah, now, why? <laughs> why? You why? mean sucker, suckers oh. and losers? Yeah, no. Yeah. Steve needs a breakfast nook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those widows, you know where they are. Adult friend finder. <laughs> they, exactly. <laughs> if you want to find a recently, a recently widowed woman who is going to slob that fucking dick, man. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Index Coin, and they also had their own exchange where Index Coin was exclusively available, the Kingdom Wealth Exchange. Actually, I want to see if the Kingdom Wealth Exchange is their own uh, personal exchange, or maybe that's an exchange that is exclusively Christian based cryptocurrency. Oh my God. That would be amazing. It was on X. Indexcoin.com is still out. It's still there. You just found the perfect utility coin designed with your future in mind. It's a, is your digital pass to a vibrant community and exclusive content designed to help you create wealth, discover your purpose, and build the life you long for. What you find interesting is that none of the, on the website, it has no Christian iconography. No. It is literally, it is very blank. So this is like a, 
they kind of tried to maybe get secular people involved as well. So maybe that was some of these people that was in there. And there's also something about the font that you could tell that it's Christian. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That doesn't have a lot of uh, style and taste. It just looks yes. like Bible font. Mm-hmm. Also, like, how do these guys get these haircuts where it's just all the hair is on the very, very tip of their skull? Yeah. Oh, like right here. Do you here? see him? Like, look at his hair. If you look at if you look on the Kingdom Wealth Exchange Facebook page, this guy, like, <laughs> how do you get that little poof? I think that's uh, fake. I, I love- think that's can hair. You think so? You think it's spraying on? Yeah, like that looks like a little like little tuft. Yeah, the tuft is hard. Ah, uh, yeah. You remember Ziggy? Oh yeah, yeah. That's fake. Yeah. It could be a front wig. It yeah. could be a lace front. staple gunned in there. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a front wig. Although I will, you know, speak for our, you know, fellow peanut headed men out there. It's tough yeah. with the hair sometimes. Oh my god. It's it's really tough having a peanut head and finding a good hairstyle for you. It's you emotional. say you're I don't think you're a peanut head. I feel like I'm a pretty solid peanut head. What do you mean? What do you mean by a peanut head? You mean like long, like it, cylindrical it's, or it's small and somewhat long. Yeah, and it dips in the middle, so there's yeah. like two a top and a bottom to it. You yeah. see, yeah. See, I like see I, I don't I don't see you as a peanut head. I think you do have a smallish head. <laughs> yeah. But so oh, I do I. Have a, you yeah. have a tiny head for yeah, sure. I definitely Which isn't have a, tiny a bad head. thing. It's not a bad thing now. Yeah. Yeah. You should. I mean, I couldn't. When I had long hair, I couldn't keep a hat on. But that was the reason why I used to uh, have long hair is because the long hair uh, made my fluffed head look it larger. Out. It fluffed it out. But now that I'm thinning, yeah. I can. Uh, I had to let go of the long hair fantasy. I got a big head, but my neck Dude, is big. Coma to the side. Coma to the side. You, Eddie's the only man I've ever met that you. I have to go to the big and tall store to get him a fucking like hat. Like yeah. he can wear a man's clothes. Like you can buy a normal man's clothes, but you have to buy him a water buffalo's hat. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like the ones with the snapbacks because they really like glue to my head and then it won't fly off. It's nice. Yeah. It's yeah. a fucking massive head. Yeah. Thank you. It's so big. Yeah, man. It's, but it, it, like I said, the neck, that's, that's the real honey. Yeah. That's your problem there. Mm-hmm. Well, you were working. That was for football. Yeah. That's my, what made you good at football. Yeah, my father used to strap weight. Put he had the strap that I would go to my head, and there was a chain to the strap, and he put weights in the chain, and he would make me lift my head up and down. And so my neck just stayed huge my whole life. That's that's awesome, incredible. Man. You you, I would say the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean incredible in the true sense of the word. It is yeah. not credible. It's incredible. <laughs> Nothing yeah, credible 21 about in, it. Twenty one inch neck. Jesus Christ! Damn, dude. Damn. Like, what do we got? We got to get you some custom shirts. I have no white. If I want to wear a tie, I have to have a custom shirt. Yeah. Or wow. I go to the big and tall store and then I have to just wear a giant shirt because that's the only one that has a neck big enough for me. You know, Destination XL is nice and they kind of flirt with you. Please. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, this uh, the financial accounts of the pastor and his wife have officially been frozen. Yes. So, yeah, they yes. are. They are yeah. out on the street right now. Down with pastors, up with pastor. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love an El Pastor. Mm. Oh, side stories, LPOTL at gmail.com. What's your favorite pastor in Los Angeles? Because I've been looking for something. I need, an, I need a hookup, man. I need something new. Yeah, sure. We got a bit of an update to one of the most horrifying stories I think we've ever covered on a true crime roundup. Henry, do you remember the story of the decapitated baby? Oh, yeah. All okay. right. Okay. There's a story that we covered last year uh, in which a woman was giving birth and the doctor somehow, after being too forceful, trying to pull the baby out, decapitated the baby. In the middle of the birth. Oh my God! Yes, it must have been using salad sporks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the it was the crampons. You know what was God, difficult? I feel evil. I just, I this is go. your life. I just, this is just too much for me. I just, I'm trying to joke around, but this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? They found the rest of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It slid out. I the one thing was that I. It's it strange that now they're calling it a homicide, where it was like. Would you think before that like her vagina was so strong that it would just snip? No, snip, it would snip. be whether or not it was an accident. But that whap, is whap, whap. <laughs> but whap, whap. no. 
but that is that's the whole thing is that it is now being ruled for the longest time they're like is this an accident is this malpractice like how are we going to charge like a crime has been committed here but what crime are we going to charge them with and the doctor has officially not the the death has been ruled a homicide well he's going to get off then because obviously he didn't fucking cut this child's head off on purpose you know involuntary hum- uh, involuntary oh, manslaughter oh involuntary manslaughter that's an easier charge much easier Man. charge yeah i think so he'll get off on the homicide yeah but the, and, but there's also but there's also so much cover up afterwards is like they took the you know the corpse away and the couple's like hey can i see the baby can i see the baby They're like no you can't do that that's not allowed They're like i have never heard of that before They're like yeah 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 you don't want to do that and so what they did is they said that they took the corpse away and they were sitting there in another room with a body and a head and they're, they're staring at it like, what the fuck are we going to do? Like, yeah. All right, all right. We- uh, nurse, nurse, uh, nurse McGillicotti, I need you to get me some glue uh, and I am going to need a uh, ha tape. <laughs> Ooh, maybe we can hold it together with some PVC pipe or some toothpicks. God, man, that must have been terrifying. Well, what they did eventually is they th- they thought like, okay, let's just wrap it up real tight in some blankets. I yeah, there's no there is no bluff that's going to cover this. There is no escapade that is going to make <laughs> this work. There's no the disorderlies aren't going to come in there. The fat boys the can't fat boys fix aren't this. showing up. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one like, problem whoa. the fat boys can't solve. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and like you know, the, and like they can't do that, and then you can they can't wrap their way out of it. No, no, they really can't. So what they did is they just wrapped it up tight enough where the head would stay in place. And they're like, yeah, there, there's your baby. Unfortunately, it died. You need to cremate this baby as soon as possible. Yeah, like they just they kept pushing like cremation, cremation, cremation. Don't do an autopsy. Don't do an autopsy. I, yeah, I would have been saying the same. Thing. They literally jammed it in a blanket and let and balanced the head on the top of it and yeah. just cinched it up like it was a burrito. Mm-hmm. And so what did she um yep. unwrap it and find out what happened? No, nope. it says during this viewing the their baby was wrapped tightly in a blanket with his head propped on top of his body in a manner such that those viewing him could not identify that he had been decapitated. Healthcare providers allegedly encouraged the mother and father to have their son cremated instead of being sent to a funeral home for burial. It was only on July 13th, several days after the delivery and a day after Ross left the hospital that staff told them about the decapitation. We're going to let it settle down for a second. Like, we don't really need to rush into all this. Like, we could sit and think about this. What is a decapitation anyway? Yeah. I mean, it was, it wasn't like it was the doctor's first delivery. No. You no. know, it's, a, I mean, this is like clearly like a, a pro, it's not a purpose. No, this guy says investigator Betty Honey and director of, ooh, that's a great name. Betty, Betty Honey. Honey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Director of the medical examiner's office, Brian Byers, consulted with experts, including one OBGYN who had done more than 9,000 deliveries. Uh, and they found that the uh, death should not have happened. Yeah, oh. the dead should not have happened. The hospital well, distanced yeah, itself. It should, when, at what level that it should have happened? Who is going to be like exactly as ordered? Thank <laughs> you very much. Does insurance cover baby decapitation? Sometimes you can't help but decapitate a baby. So like I, I I'm trying to wrap this I, around my head. Uh, unlike just like the nurses, <laughs> and I, I'm just like, did they just? Did he just pull so hard? He pulled so yeah. It says that the uh, head came off. Fractured dislocation with complete transection, upper cervical spine and spinal cord. Damn. Shoulder. Uh, this is because it's of like a scorpion fatality. Well, it was uh, the baby was caught in the vaginal canal. Like the baby was caught. Like mm-hmm. it was. You know, they were trying to pull it out, and it really was like just. You know, it just came. Oh, off. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Damn. Does it really work like that? We gotta be careful. With was these it heads. alive? Uh, well, yeah, it was alive. Yeah, it was alive. Yeah. Oh Damn. my god, that's not. Oh, yeah. oh, you can babies. Oh, Patience. God, yeah. Well, they, oh. I, it, which I, is something that doctor doesn't have anymore. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. The hospital distanced itself from the doctor last year, saying she was not an employee and only used the facility as the parent's doctor. Wow. Oh, oh so God. she was visiting. She was like a visiting practitioner coming in to handle the delivery. Yeah. And then, oh man, that's it was not a woman good. that did this. It was a woman. Yeah. I would have never guessed. 
Yeah. In a million years. No, is it weird to say, it, it, is it fucked up to say it's kind of a relief? <laughs> <laughs> It's not another yeah. mark on men. Yeah, the, know, that, like, oh, the arrogance of man. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't put this man. on us. Oh no, my. we didn't have anything to do with this. I just didn't know that, like, it feels like that scene from Dumb and Dumber with the with the, the, the pretty birds. Yeah, pretty, pretty bird. bird. Yeah. Pretty bird. Yeah, like, oh, man. I feel, I feel awful for everybody, man. Yeah. There's no way that this w woman did this on purpose. You know? I feel bad for the doctor. Yeah, I really do. Because the yeah. doctor did not know that, like, well, at least, you know, now, like, this serves as a, a gentle reminder to each doctor. Heads just pop off sometimes. Yeah. And you really need to be real careful with it. And that's why you got to grab them by the arms. Because mm -hmm. if you pop off the arms, that's not as bad. Yeah. In my mind. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Not as bad. Yeah. 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 We, got, uh, we have both have no choice but to say you're right. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> um, sometimes I make a little bit of sense. Right <laughs> from your grave. All right, well, let's go to a murder that involves some older people. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God, because in the end, it's it's a little better when they're older because they've lived longer. Mm -hmm. A 60-year-old man in Indiana was arrested over the weekend for killing his girlfriend, allegedly stabbing the woman to death, and then setting up the scene to make it appear as though he was acting in self-defense. This Charles guy Michael, was bad at it, though. He was this still guy, fucking bad. He was yeah. so bad. Charles Michael Calvert was taken into custody on Saturday and charged with one count of murder and the fatal stabbing of Marsha Linsky, according to a probable cause affidavit obtained by law and crime officers with the Allen County Police Department uh, at about 8.24 p.m. on February 3rd, responded to a 911 call about a stabbing at a residence. The caller identified himself as Calvert and allegedly stated that the victim had quote, come at me. He come at me with a knife. It was not like that at all. He was very calm and very stoic about the whole things that she'd come at me with a knife. Uh, Calvert kept saying, she is no longer with us. She's no longer with us. She's no longer with us. Yeah, she, yeah. she took a train to dead town. I, I, <laughs> she's just not here anymore. She's, what was her is no longer of us anymore. Yeah. Calvert told dispatch he also had a knife and both knives were still located in the kitchen. He stated that we were having an argument. We were both holding a knife and she came at me. Yeah. The and then the, call. Uh, as soon as she turned around, it was. <laughs> During the 911 call, Calvert told the dispatcher that his girlfriend became very, quote, became very verbal. Very verbal. Several times. And I've talked with Natalie about being verbal. Because these, <laughs> these people that you're with sometimes, they want to talk. And, and then you're, yeah. and you're like, you're being verbal with me right now. And I need you to fucking back off. Okay. Yeah. It's better than being gerbil. <laughs> Again, I have no choice but to agree. Sure. That statement. <laughs> They also noted that he sounded very calm throughout the call and had no sense of urgency whatsoever. Upon arriving at the scene, first responders found Calvert outside the home and Linsky dead inside the home. She was lying face down with a big gash on her head and neck area. Investigators also noted that the victim's right thumb was severely cut to the point where it was nearly severed, which was indicative, of course, of a defensive wound. The kitchen appeared to be disheveled with a broken crock pot, bloody kitchen knives, food items scattered, uh, all about Calvert said that he had been dating the victim for about a year, said the victim got very aggressive. The entire argument, Calvert said, the reason why she became very verbal, the reason why she freaked out, super verbal, he was cutting onions and the victim stated he wasn't doing it correctly. Oh, man. I get it. You know, I've worked in lots of kitchens and like you're wasting a bunch of the onion, you know, like you fucking like, <laughs> yeah, that mise en place. Do you have any idea how expensive onions are? Yeah, Thanks, Grandpa like Joe. <laughs> oh, Mr. Joe with his fucking with spike in the onion market. Yeah, and that's why I'm I'm voting for a change in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're gonna say that like you 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 killed her in self defense, you can't say you were both holding knives. Yeah, you got to say I wasn't holding a knife. I took her knife and I killed her with that. Knife. I had well, to kill her the, with a knife. 
It's the it's the idea that you know I'm a little bit responsible, but not all the way responsible. Yeah. You know, it's like it's kind of giving it, making yourself look a little bit guilty. It's like uh, admitting to the lesser crime so you won't get charged with the bigger crime. Uh, yeah. yeah, I beat him up, but I didn't shoot him. That's well, what you I'm know saying. what you also see a lot of these where they try to throw out a an immediate like I was defending myself, we were defending ourselves. It's always like you know. The very classic, it was some kind of Asian, you know, like there's always like somebody coming in and rushing in and killing everybody and then like just lightly disheveling things and then leaving. Yeah. Yeah. They don't realize that, you know, you can't, for example, you can't neatly place the knives next to the victim uh, and assume that everyone's like, oh, yeah, this was definitely a, a fight. Yep. Because they, you know, then he was covered in blood. She wasn't. He been obviously had washed himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the one thing he came in. That's one of those things too. If you're if, if you're gonna kill family members, don't answer the door to the cops with wet hair. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> don't show up smelling of pert. Oh yeah, I feel like yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, really good. You know, like because see, he he it was very suspicious. Well, there's just so much that he didn't do. I mean, authorities said there were no signs that Calvert attempted to render aid to Linsky after she was fatally wounded. Additionally, while there was an onion peel in the garbage, police said they did not observe a chopped up onion anywhere in the kitchen. Ah, uh, yeah, you got to chop up that onion. Yeah, you can't just say yeah. onion. And if anything, it's going to help you cry when the cops come. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if that he chopped up the onion, but despite his own best efforts, he cut it up perfectly because he would not allow himself to cut it up. So when he sees these perfectly diced onions in a pile, he's like, there's no way she would have blown me if she saw how incredible these onions were. There's no way she would kill me for this. And then had to throw it all out and be like, the peel's enough. Mm-hmm. I think they get this story. Yeah. And <laughs> Show not sho- tell. And he did shower and change. He did shower and change after fatally stabbing her. Before the cops got there? Before the cops got there. Did he at least You don't want to be a mess. He's like, listen, 911, I'll be in the shower. <laughs> if you just show up, I'll come right in. in. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> <open>. <laughs> I'll leave the door open. She's in the kitchen next to the onions. <laughs> I, I just feel a little icky. <laughs> yeah, because you know, well, honestly, I don't like strangers coming to my home if I'm not clean. Yeah, there you go. I always just shower. like this guy. I'm just like him. <laughs> and he put in these other weird details. I guess like setting up a defense that maybe that she was planning to kill him. Uh, the defendant told the dispatcher, "quote She parked her car outside of the garage. She never parks her car outside." He yeah, also suspicious. Said, she bought bleach today. She never buys bleach. In the year I've been with her, she's never bought bleach. <laughs> so his idea, Who he's trying. Who knows that? <laughs> I, I, like, I have no idea if Julie's ever bought bleach or not. Yeah, I've been with Carolina eight years. No idea. But I wouldn't, like, if she showed up with bleach one day, I wouldn't think, that's hmm. weird. She's trying to fucking kill me. <laughs> it's funny. She never has this a second cup of bleach in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's very strange because yeah, because I don't I don't look at Nat's stuff. I don't oh. look at the stuff that she comes in and out of the house with. No. Sephora bags come in and out. And again, I do want to. She did tell me when she explained to me about Sephora's forcing her to do that. I'm still yes. waiting for my small claims court process to come through because it, what they're doing to our household it, it's tearing us apart. What yeah. Sephora's doing to your household? Forcing my wife to get these items. Mm-hmm. She told me in tears in her eyes <laughs> that Sephora has been forcing this on her. Hold on a second. Is she going to the Sephora on Ventura? Because if she is, that's fucked up. Because that used to be a great diner called Dupar's. And they had wonderful <laughs> fucking pancakes. And they were open 24 hours a day. And then they shut it down. It wasn't and good enough. They opened a Sephora in the middle of my favorite pancake house. That's fucking That's what horrible. you get. That's what happens. Sorry. It's called. The pancakes it, are going all over these. B-words faces. <laughs> yeah, man. It's called the Carousel of Progress, bro. All right. Yeah. Pancakes were yesterday. Now we're using pancakes to apply dry powders. Yeah. You tell her she orders online. I don't want to go into that store. <laughs> <laughs> she does order online. I think she does. Yeah. yeah. After the show, you got to let me know what your new pancake house is. Oh, they have another Dupar's at the farmer's market. Okay. Yeah, you do. You just fucking, That's he's so full of shit. House. 
Yeah. Well, no, there is like a diner at the farmer's market. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they have man, great pies, too. All right. This is my thing. I'm going to eat pancakes and pie before buying the clothes. So when I get, honestly, that's actually a really good fun idea. So you could buy it at your most bloated. Oh, yeah. So you're that's not buying idea. it skinny. Because I feel like that's a big problem with buying clothes sometimes. And sometimes I'm buying clothes when I'm feeling skinny. And then you put them on and I'm like, oh, I'm actually fat now. Maybe you shouldn't be buying clothes at the farmer's market. <laughs> 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 yeah, where the fuck did that come from? Like, where did you? What? Mean, what it's what, a farmer's what, market. You're talking about the at the Grove. It's, it's next to the Grove. I just saw yeah, an opportunity he, to make fun of Henry. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Piece of shit. Yeah, I didn't know because every farmer's market I've ever been to, they didn't. They weren't selling clothes. They're selling. There was one down the street. And, yeah. Sometimes you'll have like an old lady with her wares, and she'll make like knit tops or something, or she'll make like something that you, yeah. no one wants. And, yeah, like and a she's sitting there. That says the chilies in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with an arrow pointing down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next story. A woman has been arrested in connection with the deaths of two cyclists who she allegedly yes. hit while driving under the influence Saturday afternoon, but she does have an excuse. This woman said she had medical issues, including uncontrollable defecation, which caused her to hit and kill cyclist brothers participating in a St. George race. Julie Ann Budge, 48, was arrested in 2022 after striking 48-year-old Matthew Bullard and 49-year-old Adam Bullard. Both men died of their injuries. After the incident, Budge told police she had various medical issues and had begun uncontrollably defecating herself without warning, causing her to swerve and hit the brothers. What I love, what I love about reporting is that the first time this story was reported, it was just that she was under the influence. This is a, you know, this is a horrible mistake. She hit these cyclists. It's not until after that she's the information coming, the trial's coming up, that it's all about her uncontrollable shitting. <laughs> and I love that as like, cause you know, that came from, that is from her defense. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely from her defense. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that's now, like before, it's like a tragic accident, two brothers kill while cycling, and now it's just every single headline, uncontrollable defecating. Uncontrollable, oh, uncontrollable defecating. defecating. Yeah. Did yeah. she have shit in her pants? Um, Yes. Great. Yeah, but wow. she also had fentanyl in her veins. Ah! ah that'll that, do it. Yep, yep. That, that was the problem. Yeah, old Budge oh, making oh. her fudge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> Hey, some of this budge's fudge is making me sleepy. I always said budge's fudge would get her into trouble one day. I knew it would. Yeah, fresh from the oven. My ass. Thanks, lady. Now, do you think, like, because she, I don't know if she's going to get away with this. I do think it is, and this is advice to our listeners, I've heard this from police, truly. That it's one of the only excuse that would get you out of a speeding ticket would be, I massively have to shit. I've like, done it. That's a thing. Everybody's done it. I asked you once. I was like, follow yes. me home and give me a ticket or I'm going to shit my pants in front of you. And it works. Yes. Nice. And it does. Yeah. You know, like that's different. But killing a bunch of people and leaving the scene of the accident. I feel like at that much point, different. if you, it's much different. And if you do do that and then you do have shit in your pants then I think you stay at the scene of the accident and you just keep shitting. Because if you do that, then you can show everyone being like, look, it keeps coming. It's like that Dr. Seuss book with the guy with the hats. Cat in a hat? No, you remember the guy? It's like oh, yeah, the yeah, man the with the million yeah, yeah, yeah. hats and the hats kept popping up on his head. But instead of that, it's fucking uncontrollable defecation. Just going down, down <laughs> You know, hop on plop. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, everyone knows you're not supposed to take fentanyl in the morning. Uh, does everyone yeah. know that? I mean, not her, but the, uh, but you know, it's, it just seems like crazy. Do drugs at night. You're not going to kill cyclists. Wine, yeah. What wine pairs with fentanyl? <laughs> Let me look this up. We will, honestly, after our last discussions, we've been talking about fentanyl quite a bit. It keeps coming up. We got into it on Side Stories this week, too. Mm -hmm. And I, it is, uh, apparently it's, Super, it's a lot of it comes from China. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it was, I guess it's, it, it's, you're only supposed to use a little bit. You're supposed to use a little bit to help it's you die. Be, but they use it as in pain medication and they use it in other stuff. And there's like people, you know, but it's apparently like that's one of the reasons why they do put it in drugs is it's also ex highly, 
highly addictive. Yeah. And there's also apparently an attraction. Like, this is like one of those like fucked up things that's interesting is that sometimes I've heard, I've, I had a couple of people write in that talked about this like phenomena of somebody who is a hardcore addict, hardcore drug addict, will actually hear that the drugs killed somebody from their dealer. And it's actually more attractive for them because then they know that it means that their dealer has really strong stuff and that they get caught in sort of that feedback loop of looking to be as high as absolutely possible. And they, you know, you just end up not waking up. It's like people who knowingly do crocodile. Yeah. Yes. They just are looking to have that story, I guess. And one arm. Yeah. Yeah. Man, there's some really intense shit going on in America right now with something that's very close to crocodile. Really? Yeah. I'll I'll look in. We'll talk about. Oh, it's a new later. drug. We'll, yeah. It's a new. It's a new kind of drug. It's uh. It's getting pretty fucking hairy. Out. It's getting really hairy out there in America, people. I blame What's it called? Huey Lewis. <laughs> he wanted a new drug, and this is what happened. You got it. <laughs> no, shit's getting real hairy out there. Really? For, for folks, yeah. No new drugs. Yeah. The drugs we have do the job. <laughs> they work. Yeah, they do work. They've worked for many years. <laughs> They've always worked. But they're not that old, you know? Yeah. Like, the, the drugs that we have, relatively speaking, you know, like... um. But, you know, methadone, heroin, not that old. Opium is yeah. kind of old, but like heroin. Yeah. Pretty but fairly Keith new. Richards Cocaine. is still alive. Cocaine's super new. Yeah. What? It's, well, it's from the 20s, right? Yeah. But uh, as far as, uh, you know, being in the Western world, yeah, cocaine's yeah. pretty new. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's called the new drug. Apparently, it's called Trank Dope. Trank Dope. Yeah. Whoa, cool. Wow. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah I've seen interviews wow, of guys. Cool. It's like he's a guy showing he's like, Yeah, my arm is infected. It's gonna fall off. I'm not gonna stop. Damn. But it's yeah, just, man. Just so it's, matter of fact about it. God, it's a hot new like realness. Anything that much. Like you've never liked no. anything that much. Yeah, yeah. Never liked that. <laughs> like not even like Led Zeppelin. Or like, <laughs> Dude, not if we don't take care of ourselves, you know it's one of those where you know, meat will kill us. That is just, you know, our delicious love off. of me. I made I the know. pastor joke earlier, but I've been laying off the red meat. Mm, I nice. go, I swing back and forth, man. I'm trying to, man. Ups and downs is hard for me. I love that meat. Mm -hmm. More fish. I know. Yeah. Now we'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Live from your grave. Last story of the day. David C. Schreutman is charged with first-degree murder in the January 30th, 2024, stabbing death of Mary Rose Feely outside of her apartment in Somerville, New Jersey. He allegedly wrote a step-by-step -step plan to kill her, had a full manifesto, and fatally stabbed her 37 times. Damn. Yeah, this this dude, it's also when you look at him, he, it's, I, I think it's funny that he's, I mean, that's not funny, oh. but I think it's funny that he's from Jersey, um, and he looks like a trauma character. Yeah, like he, he does, looks yeah. like the nerd before he turns into the toxic Avenger. He does. Like, and his name is David Schreitman. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell that he's like doing this weird ass, like he's, he was obsessed with this girl from school and after high school, this is like one of those, like, that's gotta be obviously very creepy. Like somebody who's been obsessed with you for like 10 years from high school, just showing back up in your life. Who's just been like, you have been the center of every thought that they've had for a decade. And you just, you just went to, you just like lived your life. And you're like, if someone said, do you remember David Schreitman? You're probably like, yeah, I, I guess. guess. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, like he can draw your face from memory. Yeah. Well, several local media outlets obtained a probable cause arrest affidavit de detailing the case. Investigators quickly identified Schreutman as a suspect. Cops went to talk to Schreutman on Friday, but he declined to speak with them. Detectives reportedly noticed a white garbage bag over the front seat of his car, along with a black gator and duct tape. What's a gator? G-A-I-T-E-R? A neck gator? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I believe, is that what you do in the, you, is that what you wear? Those are waiters. I'm wrong. Yeah, no, a neck gaiter, that's like something you yeah. wear like uh, instead of a mask. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a thing. And yeah, it's a neck thing and it goes up over your nose. Yeah, yeah. it's a neck warmer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Neck warmer. People were using them instead of masks during COVID. That's the only reason I remember. Yeah. The only thing is I can't find, I can't find the manifesto. That was like I was looking for it 
They Last haven't night. released it yet. They haven't released the manifesto. It was yet. all on post-it notes, so yeah. they don't know the order. <laughs> well, you know I love a manifesto. I we love all, reading man. I love a manifesto. We all love a manifesto, but I also I, I have a feeling they're just using the word manifesto without really understanding what manifesto means because it's yes. a step by it's a plan. Yeah, yeah. step yeah. by step. A plan is not a manifesto. No, a, yeah, it's a, a blueprint. Yeah, 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 blueprint. A manifesto is if why it, I did it. Yeah, why I, if there was some sort of grand scheme if, scheme behind all that. There's some sort of like grand uh, is some sort of grand like inspiration mm -hmm. for doing this. Some reason then it would be a manifesto. This is just a a plan. Yeah, yeah. That's how you know, a I, nerd did it because he fucking wrote it all down first. Mm -hmm. You know, well, a lot of these guys jock, are the jocks do crimes of passion. Yeah, it's very interesting. We're obviously criminals are dumb. That's just kind of a, an inherent thing where like, because you can't read anything about crime and see how often people get caught, how, uh, you know, like all these, like, it, but this happens like a lot. Yeah. I remember the story. People don't kill people. Yeah. But there was a guy that killed his parents that we covered a little bit on side stories. Same thing where he wrote it this, this like step by step, like, you know, when you write plans like i don't like to write necessarily like to-do lists because sometimes it feels like i've already done everything it feels like i wrote i'll write a to-do list and i'm like and done and then like i close the book and i never look at it again you know i mean like very good that's good work henry and then like you know then nothing gets done and then people are calling me and i'm missing shit and, you know just kind of space my way through it but these guys keep doing this shit where yeah. they write it all down and then obviously the plan goes awry because they never they don't, it doesn't work like that. Murder is like this, like, extremely, Eddie Kemper talked about this. Bumble Butt talked about the idea that he thought that when he stabbed somebody, they just go like, Bleh, and they'd be dead. You don't realize, like, no, it's actually, like, sometimes it takes a long time. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, strangling somebody takes three to five minutes. Yeah. And if you, you say that in your head, you, that's not a lot of time, but if you ever just sat and squeezed your throat for five minutes, you've got to have strong hands. Yeah. Yeah, you're really mean, gonna work on that. He stabbed her 37 times. Damn. You know? And they'd say that you know they always say that it's uh, you know when you stab somebody it's like oh they stabbed him so many times it had to have been a crime of passion. But sometimes yeah. you just they just keep stabbing because it takes a long time for someone to bleed out. It takes yes. a long time for someone to die from stab wounds. God, man. Until you get you know above the 30 mark and then it's gonna be pretty quick. So Jersey they don't have the death penalty. But they'll, they'll, you know, if they just put them back in the streets, Jersey would take care of them, though. Well, you know, and then it just depends. Because, yeah, because Dustin Schreitman, he doesn't look like he's got a lot of friends. No. No, he's got no friends. Like, That's why he fucking, not why he did this, but part of the reason. Nah, David Schreitman, not. Nah. David Schreitman. he's going to be going away for a long time. Good. But that's the thing is that we talk about, like, they say... It, it you know the the adage is like you know criminals are stupid, um, but you know the more I, I think the more apt way to put it would be uh, that the criminals who get caught are stupid. Yeah, but you know I point. feel it's it's just those that don't get caught are in Congress. <laughs> hey, there we go. He's up and moving. <laughs> Fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yes! He's up in the air. He's yeah, having but, a good time. But no, there a, a it's. It, it, I find that criminals more often than not will end up shooting themselves in the foot. That is Most just like the what they, that's just what they end up doing because you have a lack of income. You obviously already have some form of lack of impulse control unless you are an extremely patient criminal. Well, unless and you're again, Richard Kuklinski. Yes. yes. Or you're like somebody like him. You got somebody BTK, super yeah. patient, evil villain, you know, but I still find that they're very rare. Of they course, are. yeah. There's, you just listed the two names that I know, it's like that. Do that. <laughs> Those ones, yeah. Dick Cheney, like <laughs> yes, literally, like patient. truly one of the like very patient, extremely so, capable so villain. Patient, he's still alive. Yeah, still alive. He's, he's got. I feel like he's got like his plan isn't done yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still got a couple hearts in the freezer. And then he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what does he have to do that's next? Yeah, I don't know. Oh man, this is a. I mean, I got not that it's a contest, but this guy's the worst one today, right? Um, yeah, I'd say, well, yeah. It's between, yeah, I'd say the old man, at least it was like a crime of passion. There is the doctor that pulled the head off of the baby and then tried that to cover just, it up. Yeah. yeah so the, the covering I, I, up I, that of the was an accident. That was an accident. Yes. That's the, how I feel about that. Yeah. This yeah. is premeditated. And what would you do? 
oh, if I tore the head off a baby, I'd try to same hide thing. immediately. I, I would <laughs> do the same. <laughs> There's no way. I would literally go like, where? Where are you at? Like, hold me and like, oh, it's crazy. And then go back out there and be like, you wouldn't believe that baby tried to attack a police officer. <laughs> and I, you know, like I would be coming up with, I would be spinning yeah. tails and yeah, just he, flop sweat. I would just I, run away. A ninja came into the hospital. You and don't know. It's what happened. You know? It's, <laughs> and your baby, in a sheer moment of panic, your baby jumped in front of me to save me. <laughs> Give him a medal. He, give him a medal. <laughs> this baby's a hero. <laughs> I His, put it in for the purple heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Speaking god, its heart is purple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eddie. Yeah, uh, we're in the same page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. God, everybody's uh, horrible, huh? Yeah. Yeah, especially yep. us. Yep. Well, <laughs> next week we're going to get into. One of the most horrible men to ever live. Yeah. At least in yeah. the 20th century. Well, let's say one of the most horrible men in the latter quarter of the 20th century. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, guys- he had a lot of uh, competition uh, in the 30s he did. and 40s. He really uh, did. Yeah. But he I'd did. say, yeah, he, he's pretty bad for the last quarter. Okay. So yeah. okay. we're going to get into one of the heaviest of heavy hitters. Uh, and we're going to be doing that next week, starting with a long, deep. Long, deep series. Nice. Uh, it's going back. We're putting a lot of history into it as well. Yeah. So just understand that's called context. And you're going to learn and you're going to like it along with your murder. Well, there's right? also going to be murder in the historical context. There's a lot of it. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of blood. Battles. In the next couple. A lot of blood. A lot of blood. And then we're getting into, you know, we kind of teased it. But we'll talk a little bit about what's going behind the scenes of our government mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. 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 Do their eyes blink up and down or side to side? Oh, uh, you never know these days. Yeah. But we have a fuck ton of material plan for the rest of this year. So thank you guys, as always, for being in your fucking your home or your car right now. And not out fucking, you know, I don't know what they would be doing, not listening to our show. Listening to music? Yeah, music's great. Yeah, I love music. Not to like, you know plug anything that's not ours. Yeah. But, Listen you know. to but the show. Guys, yeah, but have you guys thought about music? Yeah, yeah. No, no, great. no. Boy Genius no. was wonderful. Yeah. Last yeah, yeah, podcast like on the left. That's the show. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you need to be listening to. Yeah. Or side stories. Or No Dogs in Space. Or Page 7. Or Wizard and the Bruiser. Brighter so, Side is your you, show. The brighter Side, yes. Fraudsters. On the network. Yes. Spun. Yes. The last podcast. All of these shows. LPN TV. Yes. You know? Go to yeah, the YouTube the Twitch. channel. Twitch.tv. There's a lot of stuff mm-hmm. being made. There's a lot of stuff. We got a YouTube strike this week, so we can't put up our new fucking videos. Really? Because there was a fucking YouTube strike. Yes, because of the video that you showed that we clipped. It was great, but it was the video of the guy snapping his leg on the skateboard. Mm-hmm. I didn't show it. No, you didn't. No, that was Kelsey. Yeah, we, we're going to have a long talk. <laughs> But no, no, I loved it. We loved the video. I Apparently, it's against it. YouTube's problem. It was an problem. accident. I can't believe that's what got us in trouble. I know, it did. I have no idea. The, well, that's not the only thing we've got in trouble for, but it's, yeah. you know. Well, I got in trouble for the ball, though. How yeah. many I strikes kick do you get up. on YouTube? I think three. What are you talking? Then we got one for the... Can we contest it? No. We'll be fine. It's no. It's coming yeah. from fucking... Some, it's somebody else, man. The AI is doing this to us, dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and if you wanted another more good music to listen to, it's been uh, Gezebel Gebergably. Okay. They're really good. Gezebel Gebergably? Yeah. That's real? Yeah, it's real. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll check it out. I've been listening to Miles Davis. Thank you. But you should be listening to Last <laughs> Podcast on the Left. Again, why are we doing this? <laughs> Fuck music, man. All right? Fucking edutainment. Yeah, man. Music isn't even real. It's all in Nah, dude. Head. It's made up. It's just noises. <laughs> music is just noises, and I don't want to cry. All right? I'm sick of crying. I'm sick of fucking feeling things. Yeah, all right? The, that's what's nice. The new album, Gaburger, is very good. Gaburger? Yeah. Gaburger mm-hmm. came out last year. Pretty You're solid. making shit up. You're literally just making up <laughs> names of bands. That's not real. Um, all right, fuckers. Hail Sweet Satan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Hail, yeah. Hail Perrier, I guess. I don't know. Soda water. No, Hail we're not water. actually I think that they're bought by Nestle, so we don't want to Oh yeah, that's right. Fuck Perrier. Yeah, we gotta stop. We gotta find something different. Yeah, and I'm sick of this shit. Yeah. Nestle's the evil. Yeah, they are. We need yeah, to make no. our own water. I didn't know yeah, I didn't know it was Nestle, so now we gotta find so some new shit. So much of everything is Nestle. Yeah. yeah. Arrowhead. 
fucking uh, the, uh, all this shit. It's all Nestle. Poland Springs Nestle. Yep, it's all Nestle. These motherfuckers. Fuck Nestle. Edutainment. You wouldn't have learned that from a girl burger girl burger. <laughs> you wouldn't learn that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Gene, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye. We'll see you next. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com.